Hey Google, turn on the lights. In the 21st century, our personal data is probably the most valuable resource most humans still have to offer. And we are giving it to the tech giants in exchange for email services and funny cat videos. Hey Google, turn on the television. You should work on your project instead of watching TV. And I think it's better if you drink water instead of whiskey. We're headed towards a future where more and more decisions that we normally make are now being made by computers, or more specifically algorithms. Actually, it's already happening. Slowly but surely, algorithms are making the decisions that we would normally make. Take YouTube as an example. There's a very high chance that you're watching this video because it got recommended to you by YouTube. And the recommendation is actually an algorithm which analyzes all the personal data you leave behind on YouTube. Which videos you've watched, which videos you liked, which ones you disliked, which ones did you leave a comment on, was that comment negative, positive, which ones did you share, which videos did you complete fully, which ones did you view only the first minute. It has so much data about you that they can make a very smart prediction and they can compare your data against all the data it collects of all the billions of people that are using YouTube to watch videos daily to make a prediction of which video you might like next. In fact, more than 70% of all the videos watched today are videos that, are, that got recommended by the YouTube recommendation algorithm. That's more than billion views per day that are being recommended by the YouTube algorithm. And here's another example, Google Maps. Now, I've been using it for years, and if you're driving a car yourself, there's a very high chance you use it as well. Basically, it's an algorithm that calculates the easiest, quickest way from point A to point B. You have a destination you have to be to, you type in the address, you click go, and it calculates the fastest way, holding into account traffic jams, roadblocks, maybe there's closed roads, whatever, and it will give you the quickest and fastest route to the destination. Now, never ever when I use Google Maps have I doubted Google Maps or I just blindly follow it. When I want to get from point A to point B, I click go on Google Maps and I just blindly trust Google Maps to take me there in the fastest way possible. So that's already an algorithm that's making the decisions for you. It decides for you which route to take and you just blindly follow it. I've read a couple of books and read a couple of articles about this, like AI will never take us, take us over because we always are in control. We can decide if we want to listen to the aid to AI, to their suggestions or, or not. Yeah. But imagine listening to the AI. So he suggests to say this and you say, ah, fuck it. I'm going to try it. I'm going to say this and you get a good response. You say, whoa, cool. Next time you suggest another thing and you're like, hey, last time we work, I'm going to do it again. Yeah. And then you start depending on the suggestions. And before you know it, it's like, AI, what do I have to tell? AI, what do I have to yeah. tell? Because he obviously knows me better than I know myself or he knows what to talk. Dude, it's the same thing with people not knowing uh, directions. Yeah. They're always using yeah. Google Maps. Yeah, you're so dependent on it You're right so, now. so dependent on it on your smartphone. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone gets anxiety, man, when your phone... Uh, <laughs> anxiety, yeah, true. Yeah. So it, in a way, yeah, you still have the control and the decision to use it or not. But I think it's an illusion because in the end, everyone is going to use it. And sure. even if you're not using it, you're going to be left behind. So what's next? Well, I want you to imagine a future. And with future, I just mean a couple of years from now where personal assistants like Google Assistant, uh, Alexa, Siri will get to know us so well that they will know us better than we know ourselves. And that's due to the fact that they have access to so much data about us that they can analyze this and use it against us. Because when you think about it, we live such a huge digital footprint right now online on all the social media platforms, all the likes, all the profile pictures, all the comments, all the web searches, Google searches, whatever. This is data that can be used 
by Google Assistant, for example. And it will only get extremer because think about it, the internet of things is only growing bigger and bigger. Everything is becoming smart. Your watch is now smart. Your smart, your mobile phone is already smart. Philips U lights are getting smart. Everything is connected to the internet and everything is leaving data behind. Your Apple watch leaves data about your sleep last night. Your Philips U lights uh, leave data about your routine. Your alarm cr clock basically tells Google Assistant when you normally wake up and when you go to bed, which will be used by Google Assistant to analyze you, get to know you, and then make decisions for you. Basically, I predict a future where even small decisions will be made by Google Assistant. Now, as an example, let's say you would have a date tonight with a beautiful girl and you're stressing out about what to wear and you want to look cool. But in the future, you would just say, hey, Google, what? Stop. You would just say, hey, what should I wear tonight? I would go for the white shirt. And Google would respond, who are you dating? You would say the name. Google would look up the name in your friends list on Facebook, see if there's any other profiles linked, Instagram, Snapchat, whatever, to that Facebook profile. Look up all the interests, all the likes, all the dislikes, all the digital footprint that is available about that person online. And based on all the data it can find, it will analyze to determine what kind of pers person she is. Sh if she's a very timid and introverted person, she might give you the recommendation to wear a plain white t-shirt. If, however, for example, she checked in in a tattoo shop uh, a couple of weeks ago and she seems like she's very outgoing and extroverted and has tattoos all over her face or whatever, the recommendation might be go all out, be extroverted as well, wear bright colored clothes, uh, wear a hat. Um, and you would take that decision because you would trust that Google has analyzed so much data that statistically Google knows better than you what to wear for the date to succeed tonight. So again, you trust Google to decide what you should wear tonight to have a successful date. And here's the important thing. We don't see it that way. We don't, we're not capable of analyzing all the online profiles of that girl and then making the decision of what to wear tonight because we don't have the, that data processing capabilities. However, an algorithm that is only going to learn from itself and only improve and only get better and better has that data processing capabilities already. It can analyze a lot of data at the same time and make very smart decisions for you. And when you think about it, we already have algorithms running our decisions. Uh, you know, our emotions and our gut feeling are actually algorithms inside biological algorithms inside our body that are trying to tell us something to decide whether to do something or not basically our biological algorithms are very outdated and are now being taken over by technological algorithms software algorithms now i know some people might find this very scary of course it seems scary but change is always scary and looking back at change it's not that bad it's not that scary I find it amazing how people always say, well, the, the rise of the smartphone and social media uh, brought upon so much anxiety and depression in our generation, whatever. But you have to remember that this is just a piece of metal and social media platforms are just apps run on that piece of metal. It's still us humans who are using those apps. It's still us humans who are influenced by other humans. It's just that the social media platforms amplify what we already are. Humans this figured out that posting only the best looking photos on Instagram will get the most likes. And most people don't realize that that's not reality. That's just a portrayal of the highlight reel of someone's life. And those people that are not aware of that fact will get depressed and anxious. But it's not that this made them depressed and anxious. It's their way of thinking, uh, of not being mindful and aware of that not being the actual life they're living. So I don't think social media and smartphone uh, have brought upon anxiety, depression. I think it just amplified us humans what we already are, insecure. So as long as you're aware and mindful about it, there should be no problem. So the whole point of this video is that I'm trying to explain that algorithms will know us better than we know ourselves 
and those algorithms will make decisions for us and those decisions will be in our best interest the future is very exciting and for now guys there's only one way to predict the future and that's by creating it so let's create our future together cheers let's take youtube as uh, let's take probably a high chance you do it as well <laughs> So let's, uh, for that, what's that, what's that? Even simple decisions will be, will be, will be, will be, will be, will be. <coughs> your calendar, your, your whatever. Watch out, watch out. Hey Google, what's the number one advice you could give the viewers of watching that are watching this video? They should leave a like, comment, and share this video and subscribe to my channel.